Today, we are going to talk about secret shopping full time. If you want to make more money as a mystery shopper, real money on your own schedule, grab a pen and paper, grab a cup of tea or beverage of your choice, and let's get down to business because this is going to be good. What's up, shoppers? Welcome to Info Shook. I'm Dee and I share insider information to help you maximize your earnings as a secret shopper. If this is your first time watching, check out my first video, Mystery Shopping Full-Time Secret Shopper, for free, easy, step-by-step -step instructions to start making money right away. Every video after that one provides more helpful tips. My tracking sheets and e-guide are now available. Also, every Thursday, I offer individual customized 30-minute coaching sessions, during your coaching session, we will do a review of your financial and scheduling needs, and we will make an assessment of available shops in your area. We will also create an agenda and create a scheduling strategy that you can use moving forward to reach your monthly goals. That's just $45 to get a full 30-minute session full of useful information tailored to your specific needs. The link is in the description. Okay, so today we are going to talk about merchandising. What is merchandising? Some of you may be seeing merchandising offers popping up for you and you're kind of wondering what that is. So I'm going to go into that. I myself uh, have done some merchandising and sometimes do merchandising. I much prefer secret shopping um, and I will go over that and tell you why. Okay, a simple way to explain what merchandising is, um, it is the activity of promoting the sale of goods, especially by their presentation in retail outlets. So, a merchandiser, normally, uh, in the, the case that you are asked to mer do a merchandising job uh, via any of the apps or anything like that, a merchandiser goes in and either uh, conducts an, in, an inventory audit or uh, ensures that product is on the shelf correctly. Um, it's more of a uh, project-based job where there is product that needs to be, new product usually, that needs to be stocked to the shelf um, a display may need to be built. Um, price changes may need to be made. Things of that nature. And a full reset can take a full eight-hour shift or it can take um, under an hour. It just depends on what it is. Uh, but the difference between um, secret shopping and merchandising is that as a merchandiser, um, the location knows why you're there. They know that you, you would go in, you would sign into their vendor logbook, and you would go and you would likely have pr products there waiting for you or a shipment there waiting for you so that you could put up a display. It is an actual um, hands-on job where you're actually doing hands-on work in the store and you could uh, be requested to, to be a merchandiser alone or you may be working with a team doing an entire aisle reset say in a Walmart or any store um, so there are merchandising companies just as there are secret shopping companies and I will for those of you who are interested in that I will include a link below to a resource for retail merchandisers. Um, I myself prefer secret shopping um, and it's probably for some of the most vain reasons. Um, as you can see, I like wearing my nails um, so I don't really want to do anything that's going to cause me you know to break a nail when you are secret shopping then you dress 
in the style or fashion that you desire to dress in. When you're doing merchandising, you're pretty much going to wear a uniform. It can be dark or khaki slacks and a polo sh style shirt. Um, it's more, it's not covert at all as, as um, secret shops are. And you also don't have as much control over your time as you do with secret shopping. However, it can provide a steady source of income if that's what you're looking for. And that's the main reason why I decided to touch on this because I know some people, you know, don't mind doing that. And a lot of companies will um, be good for you if you have school age children because you can get in and get your work done and be able to get to your kids um, by the time they're out of school if you need to on most of these because not, not too many of them are going to take all day. Um, there is, like I said, the chance that you may be offered a full shift, but it's up to you um, whether or not you sign up for a company part-time or full-time. Even um, uh, merchandisers even um, travel across the United States uh, in teams to do new store setups, um, overhauls. All kinds of things like that it's it's a, a, a really big um, industry so I do want to share some information about that um, my son actually was on a merchandising team for quite some time he did uh, when he did it he was in a certain area he didn't go all over uh, the United States or all up and down the East Coast but you if you are someone who wants to travel with a merchandising team, then that opportunity is definitely available to you. Um, or if you want to work merchandising part-time, say for instance, you have small children or you just want a part-time position, then you can do that as well. And like I said, I will include some companies that you can connect with to get started in merchandising. Um, usually merchandising companies will hire you on as a 401k employee, um, but there are merchandising apps where you can still work as an independent contractor, such as the app that I have told you about in the past called Merchandiser. And any other apps that I know of, I will also include in the description box. The overall goal of merchandising is to sell product. So visual merchandising is what I'm uh, speaking of. Um, there is some terminology that you will need to know in order to become a merchandiser. And I'll go over that with you and I'll give you those definitions because when you apply for these jobs, they're going to ask you if you know these things and you're gonna wanna know these terms, it is very likely that you have done merchandising before if you have worked in the retail industry at all. Um, even if you've worked in fast food, you've done some amount of uh, merchandising, but definitely if you've worked in retail, you've uh, done merchandising, and we're gonna go over those terms uh, now so that you will know those, and so that once you fill out an application or Put in a request to do merchandising you'll be able to honestly say you know what that is if you've done it you'll be able to say that you have so take out a pen and paper if this is something that you're interested in doing merchandising projects can pay anywhere from ten dollars per project to twenty dollars per hour um, it just depends on the company and what they have available at that time Okay, so there are a ton of terms that you need to know. Action Alley. The Action Alley is the central aisle around the store where there is generally the most open space. And retailers will prompt shoppers to make impulse purchases by positioning displays 
along that main aisle. Um, it also sometimes is called a racetrack. Audit. An audit is a way to ensure compliance and performance of a merchandising display. So when you do an audit of a display, you're ensuring that the products are in the right place. Um, you're making sure that it's set to planogram and that the correct labels and signage are used. Okay, planogram is another one of your words that you will definitely need to know. That's a big one. A planogram is also called a POG. And these are visual diagrams um, that are printed out for you. And they show you exactly where to place specific products on the shelf within an aisle. And the reason that everything is positioned the way that it is on the planogram is to maximize sales. So it's pretty much a blueprint for you to follow as you build the section of the products uh, facing the customers. And so that is a planogram or a schematic. Backstock is just inventory that's kept on a pallet in boxes in the back room until it's needed um, so that you can replenish the displays on the sales floor. So back stock is just what it sounds like, it's back stock. Um, next is a clip strip. A clip strip is a display. It's usually a plastic display, long. It has clips or hooks on it at regular intervals and you hang the merchandise down the clip strip. So you usually see those in the aisle or on an end cap um, and it helps to promote like impulse purchases. Cut in is shifting or moving merchandise to make space on the retail shelf for promotional products. So between major resets, you'll typically have cut-ins and or, or it'll be called a new product introduction. Um, next is a display. You'll need to know what a display is, which is pretty self-explanatory. A display is a presentation of the store's products used to entice the customers. An end cap, which is a word you just heard me mention, is a display at the end of the aisle. End caps um, offer a competitive advantage for brands. Um, they're more visible. They're usually for new or seasonal product and it helps to promote impulse purchases from customers who would otherwise just walk by. Um, Walgreens and Walmart have, are big ones for the end caps. Okay, next is a facing. A facing will describe how many rows should be facing on the shelf. So you'll see this on your planogram. Um, a product, for example, might have two facings on the second shelf up from the floor. Um, and it's also, this, this word facing is also used to describe pulling products forward so that they're flush with the shelf. Um, that's also known as blocking, straightening, fronting, zoning. All that is um, facing. Um, you know what a fixture is, which basically is a piece of furniture or equipment that is used uh, for a display. Uh, gondola. A gondola is a freestanding fixture. It has a flat base and then it has a vertical component with notches or pegboards in it and um, they can be customized with shelves or hooks or display accessories. Another word that you need to know is MOD um, or, or um, term you need to know is MOD and that's for modular. So different retailers use MOD 
in a lot of different ways. For one, it could be manager on duty, but that's not what we're, what we're talking about in uh, merchandising. It can, a mod can also be a POG or planogram. And sometimes it's used to refer to one four foot section of an aisle. So if an aisle say has laundry detergent in a four foot section, that's the four foot mod uh, for that product. Um, OOS is for out of stock. So when a product sells out, and it leaves an empty spot. If there's no product in the back when it's scanned, then that product is out of stock or OOS. Another uh, term is OSA, which is on shelf availability. And that just lets you know what's available on the shelf. Walmart uses the term OSCA, and that means on shelf customer availability. It's the same thing, but Walmart just has their own term for it. A pack out. A pack out is the total number of packages of an item that a shelf can can hold um, before it's at capacity. A pallet is a pallet, a wooden structure used to support goods while they're being moved. POP is point of purchase. Point of purchase. Usually, you'll see uh, promotional signage or collateral that's not a part of the regular store but it's next to the product that it's promoting so it may be like a little flyer or a little sign um it'll just call the customer's attention to a discounted price or new packaging or maybe some coupons or special offers so that's what that is um so the next term is RSA, Retail Sales Associate, or RSP, Retail Salesperson. Those are the employees that work in the, the store that you're at or the retailer that you're at. And as a merchandiser, you're going to work with store management on behalf of whoever the vendor is that you're working with. So, for instance, if that vendor was, and I'm just throwing this out here, say, for instance, the vendor was Kellogg's, then you would work with the manager to make sure that that brand's products were displayed appropriately. Okay, the next term is SKU, S-Q-U, which is a stock keeping unit. It's a unique number, usually eight alphanumeric digits assigned to an item by a retailer. And you'll find that on the price sticker. Every product has its own um, SKU, depending on what it is, what size it is, and what flavor, etc. Um, finally, you need to know the term UPC, which is Universal Product Code. So SKUs and UPCs are, um, commonly get confused. The difference is that SKUs are unique to a single retailer, whereas UPC is placed on the product by the manufacturer and applies to that product no matter what store sells it. So if two stores are selling the same product, that item will have a different SKU, but it will have the same UPC. So a SKU, is unique to the store and the UPC is unique to the manufacturer. Okay guys, so I hope that this is helpful um, to any of you who are interested in merchandising. I have done quite a bit of merchandising in my time as a secret shopper, um, interchangeably or back and forth. I have a passion for um, secret shopping, but I know a great deal about merchandising. What I may do is try and find someone who is into that and may have a channel and can give you guys some feedback. I definitely will put links in the description to help you with that. If you have any additional questions about um, merchandising, do use the links below. But if you have questions about secret shopping, I'm your girl. <laughs> 
As always, guys, I do want to provide quality information that you can use right away to create your next paycheck. Coaching sessions, again, are now available. Also, if you haven't already, pick up your e-guide and join the August 10th booking party for secret shopping at 7 p.m. Your invitation will be sent to the email address on file at checkout. Register quickly because I will be conducting these booking parties in small groups so that each member of the group can be addressed. Thanks so much for watching.